Hello everyone, we'll discuss today an important topic for every physician, not only cardiologist, which is the cardiovascular sequelae of COVID-19 infection. This lecture will focus on uh, the recently published uh, consensus documents of the American the global College of Cardiology regarding uh, COVID-19 infection is reaching almost 500 million cases worldwide, causing uh, about 6 million, million deaths uh, till this moment. What we have learned from history from the influenza pandemic at 1918 that uh, the sequelae of uh, such type of respiratory viral infection is not actually confined to the respiratory system, but it has a multi-system affection. And this uh, interesting article from 1932 discussing uh, a noticed excess mortality from causes other than influenza and pneumonia. Our agenda today will include the acute cardiovascular affection of uh, SARS-CoV-2 infection and uh, secondly uh, the post-acute sickly of SARS-CoV-19 infection what is called BASC and finally an important topic related to sports cardiology and the athlete when to return to play after uh, getting COVID infection. Starting with acute cardiovascular uh, involvement with COVID-19. An elevated troponin uh, above the 19 uh, nine, uh, percentile of upper reference limit is what is called myocardial uh, injury. Myocardial injury during the source of COVID-19 uh, infection has a very wide differential diagnosis, including uh, myocarditis, myocardial infarction, either type 1 with uh, rupture uh, atherosclerotic plaque or type 2 with demand uh, ischemia, tachycardia cardiomyopathy related to the acute stress, pulmonary embolism with RV overload, or acute exacerbation of underlying condition like uh, cardiomyopathy and heart failure, multi-system inflammatory syndrome of adult, and cytokine storm, which might cause myocardial injury and elevation of troponin. Regardless of the cause of elevated troponin, an elevated troponin in a COVID patient carry a worse prognosis and uh, should sought uh, attention to uh, diagnose the cause. Important terminology related to uh, this uh, topic starting with what uh, we just mentioned, myocardial injury, which means elevated cardiac troponin level above the 99th percentile of upper reference uh, limit, uh, with the differential diagnosis that we just mentioned. This is different from myocardial involvement, which means an abnormal myocardium evident by either electrocardiogram, uh, echocardiogram, cardiac MRI, or uh, endomyocardial biopsy or uh, pathology post-mortem. This might be associated or not with symptoms or elevated troponin. The third important term is myocarditis, which is the constellations of uh, the triad of uh, cardiac symptoms, including shortness of breath, chest pain, or palpitation, and the evidence of abnormal myocardium uh, as evident by ECG, echo, cardiac MRI, or biopsy changes, coupled with myocardial injury as evident by elevated troponin after exclusion of a significant coronary artery disease. So, starting with myocarditis, as we mentioned, uh, after exclusion of coronary artery disease, especially in men above 50 or women above 55. Possible myocarditis cases defined as the presence of cardiac symptoms with elevated troponin and abnormal myocardium, but without evidence of acute myocarditis by biopsy of cardiac MRI, or neither of them were performed. Definitive myocarditis uh, case is defined by similarly the same criteria of possible myocarditis, but here we have an evidence from either cardiac MRI or cardiac biopsy during the acute course demonstrating active myocarditis. Probable myocarditis uh, 
uh, include features of possible myocarditis, but uh, the uh, cardiac MRI or biopsy was done later on uh, within six months of infection, demonstrating an evidence of old uh, myocardial involvement, such as uh, an uh, abnormal late gadolinium enhancement. Uh, noticed in uh, some athletes uh, during routine cardiac MRI after COVID infection before return to play. The incidence of myocarditis is actually variable in different reports. This actually uh, caused by the different definitions uh, uh, used to define myocarditis in these different reports. The timing of a workup and the modality used for uh, definition of myocarditis, either biopsy, cardiac MRI, or only clinical data. Risk factor, uh, there is a, a male predominance with 68% uh, of cases occurs in males, uh, diabetes, hypertension, obesity, and old age, and uh, associated comorbidities such as immune suppression, all are risk factors for uh, myocarditis. Myocarditis pathophysiologically uh, passes through uh, main three phases. The first phase is uh, uh, where the innate immune response uh, in the form of macrophage and uh, a natural killer cell predominate in the scene, uh, which actually take uh, the period between the first and seven days of uh, infection. Second phase is uh, the phase where acquired immune response of uh, T cells and the humoral uh, immunity become activated with cytokine release between the first week and the fourth week. And third phase, uh, including remodeling phase beyond the 30 days, which include fibroblast activation and possible fibrosis. The mechanism of myocarditis has uh, different theories. Uh, none of them uh, proved till now. First uh, is direct viral invasion, which uh, proved uh, somewhat, but the evidence of uh, presence of RNA material from COVID virus and endomyocardial biopsy taking from uh, uh, myocarditis cases. But actually, uh, in all cases, the uh, viral genome is present only extracellular, nothing in the uh, myocardial uh, myocytes only in the interstitial space. Second theory is the maladaptive immune response with excessive cytokine, uh, what's called cytokine storm, that might cause uh, myocardial injury. Third theory of uh, presence of microangiopathy and blood uh, clot formation due to activation of the intrinsic uh, clotting system. Uh, other theories include molecular mimicry between the uh, viral spike protein and uh, own patient own cells, causing autoantibodies uh, interaction. And finally, uh, the hypoxia caused by the respiratory affection. So how to diagnose and manage such cases? First of all, uh, when we have a patient with COVID-19 symptoms, we have either a patient with no uh, cardiovascular symptoms regarding the severity of uh, COVID or uh, a patient uh, after uh, three months of getting COVID infection with no cardiopulmonary symptoms. In this situation, no cardiac testing is needed. In cases uh, with cardiopulmonary symptoms, including chest pain, dyspnea, palpitation, and syncope, then further workup is needed with the triad testing uh, using uh, ECG, cardiac troponin, and echocardiogram. Examples of our abnormal uh, findings in these cases include diffuse T wave inversion, a stigmant elevation without reciprocation, and why QR is complex. Echo uh, finding uh, might include non-territorial uh, regional emotional abnormalities at rest or abnormal strain. In case of all uh, return uh, normal, then further testing depends on the clinical suspicion uh, and uh, should be individualized. Which means if we have a patient with a clinical uh, probability of pulmonary embolism, then the next test will be CT pulmonary angio. If we have a patient with a suspected acute coronary syndrome, then uh, next investigation uh, of choice 
uh, might be uh, coronary anatomy detection by either coronary angiography or CT coronary angiography. On the other hand, if we have uh, one of the triad testing ECG or troponin or echocardiogram return uh, positive, then the next test of choice, uh, if the patient is clinically stable, would be a cardiac MRI for uh, uh, exclusion of uh, myocarditis. If we have a patient with uh, cardiac MRI return uh, positive uh, for uh, a diagnosis of myocarditis, then the next step will be hospitalize the patient if not already hospitalized, starting anti failure measured according to the guidelines, and uh, mechanical support might be considered in cases of cardiogenic shock with fulminant uh, myocarditis cases. Steroid is only indicated if the patient have another indication, which includes severe lung injury or monthly inflammatory uh, monthly system inflammatory syndrome of adult, or might be given empirically in case of, of uh, fulminant myocarditis with hemodynamic compromise and the evidence of uh, active infection, uh, active inflammation, sorry, uh, in endomyocardial biopsy and importantly should be balanced against the possible sepsis risk. In cases of pericarditis, uh, non-steroidal for a couple of weeks uh, coupled with uh, colchicine might be uh, given. Endomyocardial biopsy is indicated in cases of uh, fulminant myocarditis or uh, heart block or ventricular arrhythmia for uh, probing the diagnosis of uh, myocarditis and exclude other differential diagnosis. Uh, after recovery of the patient, uh, follow-up should be considered three to six months, including ECG, echo, uh, RIS monitoring, uh, plasma and cardiac MRI, especially in the severe cases or in case of persistent symptoms. What about SARS-CoV-2 vaccine? and the possible cardiovascular Actually, uh, there is some case uh, reports of uh, cardiovascular affection following the mRNA vaccine, uh, Pfizer or Moderna vaccine, with different theories, uh, including molecular mimicry between uh, the virus genome and uh, the uh, patient uh, uh, genome causing auto uh, antibodies response or um, a sort of immune dysregulation was uh, uh, over uh, acting immune response. But when we review uh, the literature about the actual instance of such cardiovascular affection, it is uh, actually very rare with instance about 40 cases in million. Uh, predominate in males, uh, especially young males between 19 and uh, 20 years, especially uh, after the second dose of uh, vaccine. But on the other hand, we have a proven benefits of uh, about uh, more than 500 fewer hospitalization rate and 138 fewer ICU admissions and fewer deaths in uh, vaccinated cases. So uh, the overall benefit uh, actually overwhelms the uh, potential risk from these vaccines. So what is the workup if we have a patient who has cardiovascular symptoms after uh, getting uh, vaccinated with, the, with this vaccine, including chest pain, dyspnea, palpitation, or syncope? First, similarly to uh, uh, the previous workup mentioned before, the triad testing including ECG, cardiac troponin, and the echocardiogram. If any of them uh, uh, return uh, abnormal, the next step will be cardiac MRI for excluding uh, myocarditis. If all return normal, then uh, further investigation will be guided by the initial uh, symptoms of the patient. And also further management is similar to uh, the previous discussed one. But what about further uh, uh, vaccination doses in such patient. Actually, uh, the consensus document uh, advise uh, uh, against further uh, vaccine doses because uh, the patient uh, uh, is prone to uh, further uh, cardiac affection. So uh, this uh, 
decision should be uh, discussed uh, actually with the patient, uh, balancing between the potential risk and the benefit of further vaccine doses. There is also some uh, case uh, reports of uh, cardiac uh, clots following uh, some vaccine, uh, uh, especially the AstraZeneca vaccine. But again, the, the, the risk is very, very low in comparison with the potential benefit of such vaccines. So we are moving to the second topic uh, today, which is the post-acute sequelae of SARS-CoV-19 infection, what is called the BUSC. The definition of BUSC is constellation of unexplained new recurrent or persistent health problems, which might be cardiac or extracardiac that uh, persist more than four weeks after uh, SARS-CoV infection according to the CDC in, uh, definition or more than 12 weeks uh, according to the NICE and WHO definition or uh, between uh, this period uh, uh, four weeks for mild infection and 12 weeks for severe infection according to the consensus uh, document. We have other syndromes with uh, overlapping symptoms similar to uh, the PASC, in, uh, the PASC uh, that we will discuss, including uh, post postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome and the chronic fatigue syndrome as uh, discussed here. Uh, but uh, uh, actually, this uh, syndrome is not fully explaining the wide spectrum of uh, symptoms uh, that seen with uh, PASC. Also, similarly, uh, both uh, syndrome have been described uh, to uh, possibly uh, occur post uh, many viral infection, including uh, cytomegalovirus, Epstein-Barr virus. So, uh, what is the potential mechanism of uh, this uh, syndrome? It includes immune dysregulation, uh, uh, over uh, inflammation or persistent inflammation persistent viral infection or uh, insulin dysfunction, metabolic dysregulation, and importantly, bed rest deconditioning after uh, quarantine, autonomic dysregulation, and mitocardial, uh, mitochondrial dysfunction. The incidence of uh, BASC uh, is between 10% uh, and 30% according to different reports. Potential uh, symptoms actually including all the body system. Cardiovascular uh, wise, it includes tachycardia, palpitation, chest pain, dyspnea, exercise intolerance. Actually, this uh, syndrome uh, is not related to the severity of uh, acute COVID infection. That means that it can happen in uh, even asymptomatic or mild COVID cases, predominate in young female, and uh, might uh, be related uh, to uh, multiple causes as we discussed before, but actually it acts on a vicious circle, starting with the symptoms uh, of fatigue, decreased exercise capacity, exercise tachycardia, also static intolerance, then the patient uh, respond uh, to the symptoms by prolonged bed rest and the managed activity. This will lead to further cardiovascular deconditioning with decreased venous return, decreased blood volume, cardiac atrophy, decreased stroke volume, and the compensatory tachycardia. This will lead, in, on the other hand, to aggravation of the patient symptoms and uh, vice versa. Important uh, terms used uh, with BASC, BASC uh, cardiovascular disease, which means the patient have one of the uh, symptoms we have mentioned before, chest pain, dyspnea, palpitation, uh, associated with abnormal initial workup. Example of uh, BASC cardiovascular disease is myocarditis, pericarditis, myocardial ischemia, cardiomyopathy, thromboembolism, pulmonary hypertension, arrhythmia, uh, including atrial fibrillation and uh, exercise This should be differentiated from the term BASC cardiovascular syndrome, which means the patient to have cardiovascular symptoms, but the initial workup all return normal. Example for this is um, isolated unexplained chest pain, unexplained dyspnea, 
palpitation, fatigue, or brain fog. So, how to diagnose and manage uh, such uh, syndrome? This start actually with uh, a focused history taking regarding uh, the nature of uh, the acute uh, infection and severity, uh, the duration of hospitalization, and uh, also include the baseline uh, uh, patient health condition, including previous cardiovascular risk factor or cardiovascular diseases. This also includes uh, uh, asking about uh, the various uh, cardiovascular symptoms, including chest pain, dyspnea, palpitation, uh, or uh, dizziness, and focusing about uh, uh, symptoms uh, suggesting autonomic uh, dysregulation, including orthostatic uh, tachycardia or uh, dizziness, uh, GIT uh, dysmotility, urinary retention, incontinence, or sexual dysfunction. Uh, and also uh, uh, an important issue is asking about the psychological uh, symptoms uh, associated with this syndrome and uh, the pattern of sleep, uh, presence of cognitive impairment or brain fog, malaise, fatigue. This is all uh, important. Next step will be uh, physical examination that should include uh, orthostatic vitals uh, and active standard test which means measurement of heart rate and the blood pressure after uh, being supine for five minutes, then measuring again immediately upon standing and at two, five, and 10 minutes interval to exclude POTS and postural hypotension, as uh, we discussed before. It also include um, the standard cardiac and pulmonary examination as usual. Next step will be the basic evaluation uh, according to the clinical presentation, which might include uh, lab investigation, including CBC, inflammatory markers, cardiac troponin, basic uh, metabolic uh, panel, and uh, plus minus uh, PNP, uh, according to the initial uh, symptoms, electrocardiogram, echocardiogram, uh, RISM monitoring, including Holter, uh, pulmonary investigation, including chest x-ray, CT chest, or pulmonary function test, again, according to the presenting symptoms. If any of these tests return abnormal, or if the patient already diagnosed with cardiovascular disease and uh, or having worsening of uh, cardiovascular uh, symptoms, if the patient also has the documented cardiac complication during the active uh, uh, acute uh, COVID infection, or if the patient has persistent or concerning cardiopulmonary symptoms, the next step will be cardiological consultation for further evaluation according to the initial symptoms. For example, if we are suspecting myocarditis, the next investigation would, would be a cardiac MRI. If we are suspecting myocardial ischemia or uh, non-ischemic cardiomyopathy, uh, in case of cardiac uh, ischemia, um, next investigation will be depend on the pretest probability varying from uh, uh, just calcium score or CT coronary angiography to uh, uh, ischemia uh, uh, imaging uh, modalities, including uh, stress uh, imaging or perfusion uh, imaging. In case of the main uh, complaint is related to palpitation or arrhythmia, then extended uh, breath monitoring might be considered. If none of this uh, criteria is present, then we are dealing with uh, PASC cardiovascular syndrome, which means the initial workup all uh, return uh, normal. Then further investigation will depend on the predominant uh, symptoms and the patient characteristics and pretest probability. Again, if the patient uh, main symptoms are related to palpitation and tachycardia, then uh, autonomic testing might be considered, orthostatic vitals, uh, cardiopulmonary exercise test to exclude deconditioning, active stand test for uh, POTS uh, evaluation, uh, RISM monitoring uh, also uh, might be considered. If the presenting sy symptom is chest pain, then uh, according to the pretest probability, 
if the patient had a low pretest probability then exercise test might be uh, enough or calcium score if the patient has moderate to high pretest probability then uh, next investigation uh, might be uh, CT coronary angiography or stress uh, imaging including stress echo if you are suspecting microvascular dysfunction then uh, myocardial perfusion imaging uh, or PET scan uh, might be considered for non-invasive evaluation and in advanced cases or high-risk cases invasive coronary angiography might be considered including invasive test for uh, coronary microcirculatory vasospasm or uh, endothelial dysfunction as the presenting symptoms or predominant symptoms is short and suppress then uh, the following tests uh, might be considered if not already done uh, echocardiogram stress echo to exclude uh, coronary artery disease cardiopulmonary exercise test and uh, pulmonary uh, evaluation also might be considered regarding resuming uh, uh, activity in such a patient it uh, most exercises might be troublesome in such a patient due to orthostatic nature of symptoms so uh, to avoid such postural symptoms recumbent or semi-recumbent uh, exercise such as cycling or rowing uh, might be considered starting with a uh, low uh, short duration 5 to 10 minutes per day and escalating uh, uh, from week to week uh, uh, by additional uh, two minutes of exercise according to each patient profile finally we will discuss uh, the COVID-19 and sports cardiology actually the data from initial uh, small sample sized uh, reports were worrisome with uh, initial report uh, of uh, prevalence of uh, myocarditis in uh, about 15 percent of athletes and the presence of abnormal um, uh, cardiac mri finding in about 46 percent of uh, these uh, athletes but we will look at this interesting study which uh, has a control actually control athlete and the control healthy uh, population uh, compared uh, to uh, uh, 59 patient athlete with uh, COVID-19 actually when compare uh, these three groups uh, we will uh, uh, notice here that uh, the leg adrenal enhancement actually similar between uh, athlete with uh, COVID-19 uh, infection and those without this means that this might be uh, uh, a normal finding in athlete in comparison with uh, healthy control none of them has leg adrenium enhancement later on the data from larger uh, registers uh, uh, are reassuring with the incidence of myocarditis is very low uh, uh, about 0 0.3 uh, to 0 0.4 percent and uh, actually uh, this data become uh, more uh, reassuring regarding the uh, myocardial involvement uh, definition it is either definitive uh, in case of t1 abnormalities associated with leg adrenium enhancement and t2 abnormality or the presence of t2 abnormality with additional supportive criteria including uh, mildly impaired uh, ejection fraction regarding effusion regarding enhancement or elevated cardiac troponin defined as probable in, in case of t1 abnormality coupled with leg adrenium enhancement and uh, uh, one more uh, uh, supportive criteria mentioned uh, above or just possible in case of isolated uh, t uh, or uh, leg adrenium enhancement alone actually you have uh, a lot of limitation of using uh, cardiac mri as a screening at all standalone which include uh, uh, the modified leg lewis criteria which is not actually validated as a screening at all for asymptomatic patient without clinical uh, guidance so the clinical relevance of isolated abnormal cardiac mri funding such as isolated leg adrenaline enhancement is still unknown
We have also a positive uh, athlete-specific normative data, uh, as we discussed in the previous slides, that uh, in studies that include control of healthy athletes, uh, leg adrenal enhancement was also uh, noticed, especially at the RV insertion uh, points. Another limitation is that it requires high level of expertise uh, with possible uh, uh, reporting errors or uh, selection bias uh, between different centers according to the experience. Absence of an appropriate control uh, group limits interpretation of clinical significance of this finding and high cost and limited availability, especially in the uh, developing uh, countries. Importantly, uh, none uh, of the confirmed cases of cardiac uh, uh, death uh, in the different registries of athletes with COVID-19. So when to return to play uh, in case of athletes after uh, getting COVID uh, infection? Following this algorithm, if the patient uh, was asymptomatic at all or has mild or moderate non-cardiopulmonary symptoms or has remote uh, infection beyond three months, so no further testing uh, and degraded return to play is indicated as long as no cardiopulmonary uh, uh, symptoms. With close monitoring of uh, this group uh, for any reported new symptoms. In cases of presence of cardiopulmonary symptoms or patient with uh, suspected uh, acute cardiovascular involvement or the presence of uh, PASC symptoms, then the next step will be triad screening using ECG, cardiac troponin, and echocardiogram and the cardiac consultation. If any of them uh, return abnormal, then the next step will be cardiac MRI to exclude myocarditis. If all return uh, normal, uh, then uh, management according to the presenting symptoms, uh, as we discussed in the past uh, pathway before, coupled with graded exercise program. In case of persistent or uh, new cardiopulmonary symptoms, then again uh, the patient should underwent cardiac MRI, and if myocarditis proved, then he should uh, absent from exercise for three to six months. But uh, if the patient uh, all finding return normal, including cardiac MRI, then additional testing might be considered, including maximal effort exercise testing after excluding myocarditis by MRI and uh, ambulatory risk monitoring. After proving myocarditis, uh, as we mentioned before, uh, absence from uh, playing for three to six months should be followed. And return to play would be based on the absence of cardiopulmonary symptoms, resolutions of laboratory evidence of myocardial injury, normalization of elevated systolic function, and the absence of spontaneous or inducible cardiac arrhythmia on ECG or uh, exercise stress testing. Now we will uh, talk about the dilemma of isolated leg gadolinium enhancement in cardiac MRI. This dilemma actually arises uh, due to the uh, routine regular screening of athlete before return to play, with some of uh, these athletes return with uh, cardiac MRI revealing leg gadolinium enhancement in the absence of uh, any uh, symptoms. So uh, how to manage uh, such cases? We have uh, either uh, uh, two scenarios. The first scenario is this might be related to resolving myocarditis, and this should be considered if we have uh, the patient have high clinical uh, criteria for suspicion of myocarditis, abnormal finding uh, in ECG or cardiac troponin, pattern of the leg adrenaline enhancement suggestive of myocarditis, mildly reduced LV systolic function, especially if coupled with abnormal strain. On the other hand, it might be unrelated to uh, myocarditis. In this scenario, uh, with uh, myocarditis is less likely uh, to be the cause. Maximal uh, uh, effort exercise testing and cardiovascular exercise testing should be considered. 
stress echocardiography uh, searching for uh, especially in cases of reduced LV systolic function to assess uh, appropriate augmentation of ejection fraction and stroke volume with exercise and uh, uh, res monitoring uh, including holter monitor so uh, our take home message uh, uh, will be in uh, acute cardio uh, in acute covid uh, cardiovascular uh, symptoms further trial testing is indicated uh, if it, uh, uh, any of them return abnormal next step will be cardiac mri uh, to exclude myocarditis in management accordingly uh, after covid infection if the patient has cardiovascular symptoms including post cardiovascular disease or post cardiovascular syndrome uh, then uh, uh, further uh, investigation should be uh, included after uh, meticulous history taking and uh, examination uh, further investigation will be guided according to the presenting symptoms and also uh, the medical treatment regarding uh, athletes before returning to play as we discussed uh, uh, if the patient if the athlete has uh, any uh, cardiovascular symptoms he should underwent a dry testing if any abnormal he will under underwent cardiac mri if any of them brought a myocarditis he should uh, uh, abstain from uh, exercise for three to six months and finally thank you